Do it uh, in front of your mic. There you go. <laughs> Party ho, campers! Ye, how? <laughs> how would how? When Liv is old enough that you can wake her up that way, mm-hmm. how do you think she will react to that? Because I assume that the you're, first time or the hundredth time, um, <laughs> I, I, she will begrudgingly get up after a hundred. The first time, though, do you think it will shake her awake, or is she just? I don't know. I could anticipate Liv being an early riser, like she's already awake by the time I'm coming in there. Mm-hmm. She's just sitting in her bed, like waiting. Like you're here now. All right, uh, good. Uh, okay. All I right. wake my kids up by grabbing their feet. They hate it. <laughs> Like, like, like pulling them off the scare. bed. <laughs> if yeah, if they don't respond, I will start to I will grab them at the ankle and start mm. pulling towards the end of the bed. Oh, I I would hate that. <laughs> I've definitely had water Sounds thrown petrifying. on me. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, yeah. that's that's against the rules. Oh yeah, definitely had water thrown on me by my mom. I once woke up my best friend in fifth grade by putting his hamster in the bed with him. <laughs> You know, it is really nice to be that's woken un- up by a dog. That is a sentence that requires the story afterwards. <laughs> that's no, it's an unnerving out of feeling, I would imagine. <laughs> out of context, we don't need any more. Just <laughs> leave that with the yeah, with the yeah, listener. Save that for he save got that up, for your episode. He got off. You can fill swiftly. in the lines yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking so of, we'll start recording now. Yeah, yes, <laughs> let's do that. All right. Uh, so we're uh, we're giving Ben what he wants. We're giving him a whole episode. I would have bet Some my next airtime. paycheck. That's how you were going to start this. You <laughs> sent me the text, sir. He was like, Is After this you okay begged you? for like 18 weeks in a row, like, dude, just let me talk about I'm really me. really interesting. <laughs> so this is, this, the idea we have for today is stemming from uh, an episode that's to come. And I won't tell you about it because I want you to be surprised and excited by it when it comes out of nowhere. Hmm. But Next week. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Probably not. We'll you never yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, we've been trying to do the episode that we're not doing for about six weeks now. At what, is it Bill Gates? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was supposed to come the week he went to Dax and Dax won. Can't so. wait to get that guy on the books, man. Mm. Anyway, Great. so we're doing this episode in preparation for Bill Gates. What does today look like? <laughs> so we brought on Fauci. He's doing any and everybody right now. Uh, no, we're doing, we're doing Ben's story. Uh, because I realized, um, a few weeks back, I've had the idea of doing this for a while, but I was just kind of waiting for, you know, a slow week. Uh, and then here it is. Mm. <laughs> post awake. Last post week was post a real slow week. Post, post a real slow week. Yeah. Um, yeah. A real snow week? <laughs> yes. Good. Was that um, pause so that the audience could laugh? Was that what Yeah, so yeah, I wanted them to be able to hear what I was going to say now laughter. so that their laughter could subside. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben, for this filling is a really that in. Stupid episode already. <laughs> so we're gonna do Ben's story. Uh, I realized a few weeks back uh, that I really don't think you've shared. Uh, I wouldn't say your story in whole, but just a large section of your story uh, outside of the staff circle ever. I think you've done like um, bits and pieces as part of like from stage examples or, for your talk and stuff like that yeah mm. um, talk about yours and Cammy's story with marriage and stuff like that mm-hmm. but you never really like started from pseudo childhood Ben up until where he is now so this is a this is a series like a four part deal yeah we just don't we don't who are you <laughs> I'm gonna say so how get long are to we know here? your pastor <laughs> yeah well when I read the text message I thought okay why would this be of any value uh, because you know you don't want to put content out there that nobody cares about but it does feel like when you're on stage a lot, and Austin, you could confirm this, that your life story up until that moment really informs the things that you see and teach and talk about and the things you get passionate about in your delivery. And uh, I realized after reading the text from you earlier today, Chase, that um, you know people listen to me all the time. They don't really have the backstory about why is this guy why is this so important to this guy? Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say they probably have a general idea of the kind of guy you are, but they don't really know like how that happened. Yeah, because yeah. even I know, like you know, when I first came to Vertical, you were already here. Um, you're you're a very different guy. Yeah, uh, thank God. From back then, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> thank God. Yeah, um, and I I have all you know the details of how mm-hmm. that's changed, but all that the, 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 the people you're you're leading don't really. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. 
I'm going to need some help though, because we can readily admit I'm, I'm incredibly wordy mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll divert onto this thing that doesn't even really matter for the end game, you know? Uh, so where, where do we start? What do I need to talk about? To my thought, um, the way I, I think is always best if we're not like doing the two hour version where we're really unpacking everything. <laughs> if we're trying to fit it in like 20 minutes, mm-hmm. then I think like general synopsis of um, personality creation when you're a kid. Yeah. Because that's important. Like okay. what what parts of your story motivate what you do now most? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you do kind of have to go back to childhood. Yeah. Right. So like it, it's like personality milestones here where we are now. I feel like it's kind of the general Yeah, I think I can do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so... Where were you born? The uh, I was actually born in Macomb, Mississippi. Where's that? Uh, Way which south. Is, down yeah, south, south of yeah. Brookhaven, Mississippi. Brookhaven. Which is, yeah, Brookhaven, which is... Is that the proper way? To it, it is. It's okay. stupid. That's the where indigenous Zach people. is from, right? Yeah. Is he from Brookhaven? Uh, it's supposed to be pronounced Brookhaven. He's from Boca Chitta. Yeah. All right, moving along. <laughs> this is going great so far. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. my bad. Uh, yeah, so Not I, even I, I was born there, but my parents were living in Madison at the time when it was just a little farming community. It's the it's the only place they could afford a home. But my mom's doctor was in Macomb uh, because my parents are from Lincoln County, uh, which that loops back in later with my opinions about race and racism and uh, the history of Mississippi and uh, by my estimation, Lincoln County and surrounding areas were like the hotbed of a lot of the stuff that was going on, a lot of which is still unknown. Uh, but that, that works its way into my story later on mm. when it comes to racism. But uh, So I am the youngest of the youngest. My mother and father are both the youngest in, in their nuclear families. I'm the youngest uh, by six years. I have an older brother who is literally a genius um, really intelligent guy, double majored in college, uh, is a law professor. <laughs> so he graduated from law school and within two and a half months was teaching at that same law school. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. So that informs a lot of, of how I feel, not because of anything that, that my family did, but... Um, Context. Yeah. yeah, I generally have this feeling like I should know things already. And being uh, such a younger person than my brother and my brother being so intelligent. It's Mm -hmm. like I was in a house with three people that were all on the same page and operating as adults growing up as a child. And you didn't even have the book. That's right. That they're reading from. Yeah, exactly. Um, So, and uh, actually I make this a joke a lot, but I spent a lot of time uh, overweight as a child. Love Doritos and uh, microwave brownies. Mm-hmm. Where do honey buns come in? Uh, honey buns are like if you're out of those things. Oh, okay. Then then you have some some honey buns. So I've heard about um, your honey your love for honey buns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I don't understand why that's such a big problem because they are amazing. They are. No, I think it's it's not so much that they're a problem. It's the, how much you bougie them up compared to most <laughs> yeah, people. You really tried to class up a honey bun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I th- my, I thought I was already kind of bougie by just like knowing that eight seconds is perfect amount for it. But you're like, right. oh, you gotta also put a little bit of room temp butter on there yeah so it, uh, yeah so it's there's a whole, whole thing. thing so this yeah. all leads to like little fat bin <laughs> yeah that's where it thinks yeah <laughs> keep, you're the boundary guy okay yeah. no i was just making sure i knew so uh, so you're fat <laughs> yeah yeah you, yeah, you yeah. so awesome. you know overweight before i before i found sports which that's what that'll come in mm-hmm. uh, in a minute as well but um overweight and my my father was the principal at most of the schools that i went to <laughs> so this is, the, this is a really bad combo. It's like um, the worst version of working for your dad. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 So, w- you know. Was your dad one of those guys that showed, because we all played for these coaches that had the sons on the teams. Was your dad one of those guys that showed a little bit of favoritism or was he the one that was like even harder on you because you were in the general vicinity and he wanted to make sure that they knew that he wasn't There is no nepotism. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, he was the ladder. that guy. He yeah. was yeah. that guy. Yeah. 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 So there was no like star student like none of the awards went to my dad's kids yeah uh, he's like no that's not gonna happen here so and and even like passing in the hall he was mr Derek. he he wasn't dad it was just uh-huh. really really specific about that uh because he had seen it go wrong in other places and uh so that that was a little odd yeah you know, my dad's there but he's not there um which isn't a larger theme but so long story short there was just a lot of i grew up in a fishbowl 
and I wasn't like this, the star athlete or, uh, you know, the, the beautiful kid or anything like that. So I, I initially started very young in life trying to figure out, okay, how do I camouflage? How do I earn my place? And mm. I feel, I feel behind here and I don't know the jokes that other, other people know the, the main story I tell to describe this is my dad came in to our house one day, um, after work and he was talking to my mom in the kitchen and he goes, can you believe Roy Orbison died? And I'm sitting at the table and I'm like, oh, dang, man, I wonder if they were close. You know, I start thinking this like, who's Roy? You know, yeah. my brother knows, my parents know. And I spend a lot of time thinking he's lost a, a family a friend. friend or something. <laughs> and he was actually a famous guy. So that, that just kind of defines my childhood. And uh, my brother, funny, funny enough, had convinced me for a couple of years I was adopted. And uh <laughs> all good brothers do that. Yeah, he hates that siblings. I tell those stories. But he literally walked down like the wall where all the family pictures were. And I'm <laughs> like, I'm not story. adopted. That's me as a child. And he's like, no, haven't you seen at the drugstore the pictures that are in the frames? Oh, no. And uh, man, he did a great job. Really wow, smart he really guy. really convinced you. Yeah, yeah. So just kind of feeling. <laughs> smart. Yeah. <laughs> kind of feeling out Worked of place. Worked the litigation very early on. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I could try that now. Very convincing guy. Uh, so let, let's fast forward a little bit, uh, making the turn to getting to the middle school years. Uh, my dad takes a job and is no longer the principal at a campus but I was still going to school there. Mm. So now I'm the kid whose dad used to be the principal who isn't there anymore. Mm. And uh, that was a pretty difficult year. I end up transitioning after that year to a different school in a different part of town. And that's where things got really ugly. Uh, I went from a, a school of mostly blue collar people uh, on, on one side of town to the epicenter of Northeast Jackson. And, Describe uh, Northeast Jackson uh, in two sentences or less. Everybody gets exactly what they want, whether they can afford it or not, by any means necessary, mm. uh, was my experience. Okay, so I have to be very clear about this because I have lots of friends who still live in that area. I'm not, I'm not trying to be demeaning about someone from Northeast Jackson. That was my experience when I got there. Uh, when I got there, I went to a party in junior high school, as we called it at the time. I got lost in the house. That's how big this house was, mm -hmm. you know. You were just looking for a honey bun. Yeah, I'm like, where do they keep the honey buns in this <laughs> Can't place? Even find the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, where is the room? The yeah, yeah, different. Part. Different. Um, uh, this house had a player piano. Do you guys know what that yeah. is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This house. That's Secret how I eventually expensive. found cool. my way back to where I had left. I was like, started listening for the piano because wow. it was, yeah, it was completely crazy. Um, but that was a pretty difficult time for me, where I made some really, really bad decisions about how to camouflage and play the role that is required to be what is accepted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I had learned a little bit of that early on. This is where sports comes into my story. So the identity of Ben, and this is a problem based on my personality, has always been what other people needed it to be. Mm -hmm. And part of that was being part of a family that was known. You know, that's why I have a lot of sensitivity uh, to my sons right now being a pastor and they don't, they go to church, but they're really going to their dad's job, yeah. you know, and I, and I hate that. I really hate that, but it's just part of how, I mean, it's what God has put together. So I don't want to fight God about it, but I adopted early on. Um, I need to be who I'm supposed to be here for the good of everyone else. And that leads to a lot of bad things, especially uh, in Northeast Jackson, where there's so much money, there's so much opulence. And at that time, there was so much success at the campus that I was going to. I um, had a great friend group. I'm, I'm still friends with a lot of those people today. Uh, but the person that I was then, uh, since 18, I have been really embarrassed of that person, uh, which is a big part of my story. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I'm so emphatic in, in warning people about things and wanting to make sure that real is an actual word that we mean around here. Uh, because I spent so much of my life not being that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are evidences of my personality, but they are always pushed through the filter of Northeast Jackson. And um, I found out <laughs> since then that a lot of people were trapped in that. I think yeah. it's a common thing, um, whether you're in an, an affluent area or not, you figure out how to survive based on the parameters that you're given. Yeah. Uh, my problem was once I decided what that was, I was going to be the best at it. So here's how God interrupted that. I get to 17 years old and I'm diagnosed with cancer, <laughs> which was like, God said, 
hey, I, I think we could fix this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, <laughs> how do you break out of the Northeast Jackson? Terminal illness, that should do it. Um, so people always ask me, like, would you change it? Do you think God caused it? And I'm like, you know, no, I wouldn't change it. Did God cause it? I'm to a place in my life to where if he did, I'm okay with it because of the things that I've gained from it mm-hmm. feel very loving. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't say that about other people's diagnoses. But uh, so I went through that illness and it basically it made me an outsider in that environment uh, because I could not perform. I couldn't produce. A lot of people around me loved me very, very well through those years, but internally it was a huge crisis because everything that I had put my identity in was taken away from me. I went from 225 pounds at that time uh, in this little small private school ecosystem athletics. It was very easy to to stand out there. Uh, but I dropped down to, I think 171 was my last weight. So that's a, that's so, a large drop. Yeah. My yeah. poor mom, she was sending me to, uh, with the debit card, she was sending me to North Park Mall every Thursday night to get a new pair of pants to wear to school on Friday. Uh, but I was just losing weight that rapidly. Mm. Uh, but through that, I started to question a lot of things. And uh, I had to see my parents grieve. I had to see my parents like try to be there for me. Um, they, did, they, they wanted to be there for me, but they couldn't quite understand what I was going through. That frustrated them like crazy. My brother was away at school. He kind of panics a little bit. Like, I've got to be there for my, my younger brother, but he's trying to build his own life. And mm. very pivotal year there. And uh, so, um, spoiler alert, I made it through the cancer. Oh. Yeah, I did survive. survive. And uh, yeah, I know Avery was getting nervous. Hairline yeah. and time. How's this well, going to turn out? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but, but can I pause real quick? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm curious. I've heard you talk about that before. And just because our stories are a little similar, I've heard you talk about your mom's reaction to the diagnosis. I've never heard you talk about your dad's reaction. Yes. Yeah. So my dad is a very quiet man. Um, he is, uh, I, I believe he's never dug into this, but I believe he's a Enneagram five. Um, so he's, he's very quiet. He's very reserved. Uh, his emotions are, are buried pretty deep. I mm-hmm. think I could say publicly. And a lot of that has to do with our family history. Uh, my grandfather, his father was a hundred times more what my dad is because of his history. He was abused as a child. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so my dad's reaction was clinging to his faith uh, quiet strength, um, also trying to provide a sense of stability, but he was thrown off of his game, no doubt. Uh, did you sense that at 17? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Up until that point, I had seen my dad cry one time. It was at his mother's funeral and I saw him cry the day that the doctor called and told us, man, uh, the day that doctor called and told us like, Hey, this is, this is a big deal. This is cancer. This is life threatening. And it, it, that was back in the day where you had home phones and everybody mm-hmm. would grab one. And listen. Uh, to listen. Yeah. yeah, to listen. To <laughs> the Quit doctor. breathing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really crazy. The doctor the called from his car and we were just like amazed uh, that he would do that, Greg Pfizer. But yes, yeah, so my dad cried. I just remember I described it as um, his chin went to his chest and he couldn't make eye contact and, and started to get really emotional. But after, I mean, once he did that, he was like, all right, I'm going to find the middle here. Like I'm going to, I'm going to try to be strong for my son and, Mm. and, and do, he's always done these kind of small things to show support, like, you know, small things at the hospital showing up Mm. with something, uh, when he was taking his rotation that he knew that I would want, or just those little signals of like, I, I'm not going to give in too much because I'm totally going to lose, lose it. Yeah. But I'll, I'll give you enough here to let Mm. you know that I'm, I'm there. I'm paying attention. Yeah. Then I'm paying attention. Of course, my mom's like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my mom's a little Irish woman. She's going crazy. Like she's uh, determined that she knows better than the doctors. I mean, yeah. she was just vicious and uh, which I needed that as well. Um, so yeah, so that was a real pivotal year for me. Mm. Yeah. Um, it was on the heels of feeling as we call it a call into ministry and it felt very convincing. Like, yeah, okay. I get it. I'm mm. going to do this. I'll, I'll do this uh, for you. But as a result of that, I got survivor's guilt which I, I didn't know anything about. And my family's not a, believe it or not, um, people probably be shocked by this, but my family's not a really big therapy family. Uh, that was, that's like weird. I think kind of still is weird for them. Uh, I'm a big therapy person, but I didn't know I had that, but I did. So this is where Cammie comes in. I meet Cammie right mm. after my battle with cancer. Mm. Poor, poor woman. Uh, so, you know, so I'm like living life at a thousand miles an hour, 
I'm trying to earn it for Jesus. I mean, I did all of the stereotypical things coming out of that illness. I'm an intern at a church. I'm working crazy hours. I'm like carrying a Bible around in my back pocket. I'm like the poster child for religion and, and meet a girl. I'm like, oh my gosh, I almost died. Here's a girl. Let's get married. You know, like that was my whole thought process and beautiful, beautiful woman. I'm like, I have to settle this right now, you know? And uh, so unfortunately she has to process through all of that stuff with me in real time. And I was going to a Christian college at the time, which was great for me in a, in a million ways, terrible in a million other ways, um, which I think people will understand that who have been there. Yep. Am I doing okay speeding through this? It's fine. Yeah. So we'll go back and pick up maybe some, some things that I've Keep left going. out. Yeah. Uh, so I determined that I could never, ever work in a church, mainly because of the churches that I attended growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, my life experience kind of ripped me out of all of the platitudes that at that time the Southern Baptist denomination had given me mm. to grow up on. It also exposed, I think, some prejudices that I just was not okay with mm. any longer. Uh, not that they were bad people, but I'm like, this system is broken. And I can see it at 17 years old with the thing that I'm struggling with. Like if one other person tells me that God's going to create some beautiful things out of this diagnosis and my catheter and surgeries, I'm going to hit him in the face. And if one other person quotes to me, I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, I'm going to hit them in the face twice, you know, Mm -hmm. and like this, it just felt like when I was going to my faith base, they weren't giving me what I needed yeah. in that time, which that plays out in, in how I operate my job in my job here. Uh, but I, I got some things settled in that time, but other things were really, really turned upside down. Yeah. So, I, so that's the cancer era. Mm-hmm. Um, you're doing the intern thing. Somehow you end up in seminary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want those two dots connected. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I was going to Mississippi State as a communication major because yep. all my friends were going there, and uh, I could be anonymous there. I ended up at Mississippi College because I just couldn't shake the feeling that, that God really wanted me to be there, and I, and I really did not want to be there. But some things worked out to where I could go there with some scholarships and, and things, and, and thank God for that because the men who were, uh, and women who were teaching religious stuff there helped me. <laughs> they helped mm-hmm. me really decode the stuff that I had learned up until that point that was really incorrect uh, about the Bible and God and Jesus and community and all of those things. They were just really rebellious people. And um, a few of the professors there uh, told me that I, I should go to seminary. And I thought at that time, well, that's really what you're supposed to do. You have to do if you're going to work in a church, you've got yeah. to go do this. And, uh, but they pulled me aside one day and they took me to coffee and they said, you don't want to go to these particular seminaries. Hmm. I said, why not? Great was, insider knowledge. Yeah. It was, <laughs> there's was a big story behind it, but the main thing they said, and I'll never forget this empowerment. They said, we know you, we know the way that you think you will never be happy at one of these places. Hmm. And we're more concerned actually that it will change you. And we don't want that to happen. That statement says like 16 different things that are yeah. supporting it. It was a huge affirmation. Yeah. yeah, huge affirmation. Mm-hmm. You know, because inside at this point in my life, I'm still just a fat kid that survived cancer. Mm-hmm. You know, and even worse than that, when, when you survive a life-threatening illness, people just give you all kinds of credit that you don't deserve mm-hmm. for your maturity and your life story. And, oh, look at what God has done in your life. And you're like, well, I'm still kind of pissed at God, <laughs> but if you want to make me your poster child, all right. Well, and then you go to a seminary that only more empowers you to, well, I mean, we don't, yeah. yeah. It can be dangerous. It That's be, next episode. It yeah. can be very, it can be very dangerous. So <laughs> I, I don't actually, need to be here for that episode. <laughs> yeah. I actually ended up, um, Fast forward, I, I, after that meeting, one of the professors there who taught um, at, at this college, he taught homiletics, which is basically preaching. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Fancy he, names for things. The, uh, that's, that, well, that's Darn. seminary. It's literally so you can say, yeah, I study homiletics. Yeah, like, that's wow. what the tagline for seminary that? should be, fancy names for things. I can't even say things. that. <laughs> yeah. So smart. So he pulled me aside and he said, look, there's this place that's it's fairly young. At uh, Baylor University, I really think you should you should check into it. And uh, I looked into Asbury, which Bill B- Blair knows a lot about. Uh, Is that where did Bill go to Asbury? I uh, gr- actually grew up around Asbury. One of my favorite humans teaches at Asbury. Yeah, he's grew- the guy that told me Dave Ramsey isn't a Christian preacher. <laughs> 
Also, great advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's actually not what he does. Oh yeah, my but you ended up at Baylor. But I ended up at Baylor. Yeah, and at Baylor it was just more of the same. Uh, this seminary started because another one was taken over by a political coup, and the professors were locked out of their offices, and they made their way from yeah. Dallas down to Waco. Well, and, and for those that don't know, Baylor's seminary, uh, Truett, right, mm-hmm. is very taboo in Southern Baptist oh, man, circles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a guy. Someone would say they hate it. Well, like when Ben yeah. told me he went to Baylor, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why you work here. That's yeah. me, the rebel. Yeah. Uh, I had a guy pull me aside before I left uh, to go out there, and he said, man, you don't want to do this. You'll never work in a church again. Mm. And I said, if it's a church that you're a part of, that's great. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If that's the kind of mentality that you it's have. It's crazy how right he was, but we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> correct. Yeah. So I don't know where where we go the from. The man here. was a prophet. Yeah, he was. A, he was a prophet. Yeah. Uh, so you make it to Baylor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we've kind of established all the stigmatism around it, mm-hmm. uh, for better or for worse. Um, better. Yeah. Tell me about. All right. So spoiler alert: you reel in Cami uh, yes. during this time. By she, my hardest. Yeah. Yeah. There's a long story there that I I don't think uh, I think that's just more, be more, more. That's yeah. more of a rom com story than a. Be more entertaining if she told it. That's, what that's true. Maybe we'll, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> that's a good Maybe. idea. Uh, all right, so you're in Baylor. Uh, Cammy's with you. What are the things that are happening uh, in Baylor that you're learning that are affecting you now? Were you a part of the cult in Waco? No, just missed it. Yeah, that, yeah. that was right after, right? Yeah, yeah. Man, I was hoping just for that. Just missed it, yeah. You could not visit. You still, I don't think you still can visit. There were... Uh, um, federal guards at the entrance so you can't go out there crazy uh yeah but tax it, dollars it was still over the over the city that feeling was still over waco at the time that i was there um but i i will tell you the main thing that i'm learning at baylor is how much i actually don't know which mm. is important for a young baptist kid to understand mm. there are lots of things that you don't know and they're a little they're, northeast baptist kid yeah there are the northeast baptist kid there are Sorry, lots northeast of people Jackson. out there that yeah. are smarter smarter than you mm. and i run up against some people um men and women which is particularly important mm-hmm. uh in waco that really have a profound effect on my faith and um one of them was actually the pastor at the church that I attended along with all of my seminary professors in downtown Waco, Julie Pennington Russell. I, I think she's in California somewhere now, uh, but she was actually the pastor at the church that we attended and her ability to interpret the story of the Bible was just unparalleled. Hmm. And a lot of the professors there, obviously brainiacs, but in a different kind of way, they weren't ivory tower people. Yeah. They they had their feet on the firmly on the ground. One of them is the dean there now, Todd Still, and uh, took a trip with him to Turkey and Greece. And I was just learning. There's so many things out there that I have definitive opinions about, but that's only because I have very limited knowledge about those areas. And uh, that was the value to me, uh, for me for seminary. Thanks for joining us for the first half of Ben's story. Join us in episode 45 next week for the second half. Hey, guess what? What's up, Chase? We changed clothes. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> is it, do we tell people that it's a day later? Do we come up with an extravagant story that we all were a part of, and that's the reason why we changed clothes? I think clothes. the people uh, that watch the first segment yeah. already feel like it's a day later. <laughs> Uh, so we'll well, we'll yeah. tell them that the first option is the truth, but we're happy to express the second one. What, if there was now. a reason for us all to change clothes mid workday, what probably happened? Pallets for a wig. <laughs> are, it, yeah, but, something yeah. boring like we got muddy moving. Yeah, stuff. pallets for a wig is totally good. boring. I don't know. It got, got caught in the rain. We all took a drive. And, or uh, like an exorcism Michael's went Jeep. weird. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Or probably the most common thing is we all went to a restaurant that was quite mm. pungent and had to change clothes. Uh, that oh, has that happened. Is <laughs> is yeah, is that has happened in the past. Line. It's yeah. like, do we all smell like Greek food? I yeah, do not fine. go I do not eat in Athenos for that very reason. Really? Yes. Is that, that, I've never had a I'll get it for you. It holds on to you. Mm. Wow. Most barbecue restaurants are like that. Like I know if you ate barbecue. Yeah. Another restaurant uh, in Ridgeland, Kyoto's, used to be notorious oh, for that. I freaking love that place. Yeah, but you're, you're going Great to smell song. like it for five days. 
Mm. Mm. Anyway. All right. All right. Where are we? What segment, what, what segment are we in? Yeah. Are we so in? what we did um, was uh, Ben's story was real long, and we're not mad at him about it. So therefore, we're recording uh, questions and recommends separately. Okay. So we, we have other stuff to do. So we did part one of Ben's story. Yep. And now we're residing in podcast one of the two that are. And we're back in time. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Well, Great, Scott. Good thing it doesn't matter <laughs> about what Great we're answering or uh, recommending. Great, Scott. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. That's what <laughs> right. second one. Hey. Do you have questions for us? Um, I do. I asked the audience for questions and. They delivered. I saw that finally. Actually. Yeah. Yes, I I had to fight the urge to send questions so for myself. So uh, did I. Um, Would you have accepted our questions? Maybe if it was a good question. I predicted uh, no. So yeah, I just my thought would be no. I would no matter what. It. No matter what we ask, it's probably not too late. I, I should have just had Caitlin send in questions. Yeah, then it would have counted. There you go. But me come up with them. Um, mm. But yeah. So also. I I love the momentum of getting the questions. So keep at it. Uh, please keep sending them. Um, but all right, we have three that we're going to answer today. Oh, and um, these are fun. Are they good? Okay. Are our people creative? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think created I think to create. Good. That was very judgy. Y'all sent some spicy questions too that I'm going to have to warn everyone here about. You know what's funny is that like the people that probably asked them on the Instagram don't even listen, so they'll never know. Um. Yeah. <laughs> There are probably people we know in our personal life, and they're like, I'm about to roast you yes. <laughs> over roast. this question. Hey, tell me why you suck a lot. Yeah. Why are you so terrible? Okay. What we got? Um, first question, what is the most important part of your morning routine? Oh, my gosh. But oh. no no church answers here. Oh, know? no. The shower. Okay. And why? Because that's the only way I wake up. It's not coffee. It's not anything else. If I don't shower, I'm sleepy the whole day. We, I think we've talked about morning routines on here before. Every part of my morning routine is very important. But what <laughs> From is couch the cushions most, to, to the pillows. What is the most crucial part, though? Probably brushing my teeth. I mean, if you lose your teeth, then... Okay, but, okay, so I would lump that in with just getting ready, okay? So you have, like, getting ready, and then you have the things that you do from when you get ready or to when you leave. You know, like you make you clearly, coffee. You, you clearly read a book. haven't had a small group with middle school boys. <laughs> Getting ready is a multi staggered level yeah. thing. Okay, so my typical morning routine. I'm gonna get up probably about the time that Caitlin, between the time she gets up, which is very early, and when she leaves for work, I'm gonna get up unless I'm, it's Saturday. I'm gonna make yeah, and then she's out. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna make us a Chemex, and we're going to enjoy that. I should probably say time with my wife, but I'm not saying that. Um, and then like, usually I'll take the dogs for a walk. Yeah. And then I just kind of get ready. I read in the mornings. Yeah. Okay. So out of the time with your wife, the walk and your reading time, like if you had to pick one. Probably reading. Okay. That, there you go. There's yeah. your answer. Yeah. That makes sense. I was thinking through trying to determine for mine. I am, uh, I've been since early December, I think. I'm chewing um, my cough drop. Yeah, we can we can hear it. <laughs> Very um, disturbed. Since ASMR. early December, I've been waking up at 4.30, and I do French press because I'm- I, What workout is that? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> French <Shut> press. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not doing any, any of those. I refuse. But uh, so I wake up at 4.30, <laughs> then I do the French, uh, French press, and then I have some time in my home office, which is actually a storage closet off it's my cold. <laughs> it's cold. It is. Why French press? Yeah. Uh, it just Why? it feels like it, it's not a coffee pot, but it's not as complicated as the Chemex. Honestly, okay. I'm forty two, almost forty two. So, yeah. Hey, can I add? Like a, can I add a step to your French press to make it better? Gladly. Okay. So you do. Um, you do you kettle? Is that what you do? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gooseneck. Yes. I think that matters much with a. Pour fast, all right? Pour fast, all right? Halfway, stir with spoon. The rest of the way, stir with spoon, lid on. Anytime I am, um, we do we do pour overs, um, but anytime I have a French press, I immediately feel like I'm camping. You feel that way when you wake yeah, up it's, in the morning? It's it called, yeah, it's called simple. camp coffee. I mean, you sacrifice <laughs> the last little bit in the cup because mm. you're like, Ugh. Well, I just, like, yeah. that feels like what you do when you camp is the yeah. French press. Yeah, yeah. So and it's, get... it's quiet. It's, like, methodical, and you have to... I don't know. It's just, it's a peaceful. So you use methodical, is it methodical no, coffee? No. Oh my goodness. It's a peaceful thing for me to do first thing. Then I go to my office, which is outside uh, off my garage, was a storage closet I converted <laughs> and um, do, do some spiritual things in there with reading and journaling and all that. 
But uh, a rain dance. Some spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I dance I, a little. Yeah. <laughs> I keep my pipes out there. <laughs> Pro tip, the rain dance doesn't work if you're indoors. If you're, oh, you got to see the clouds. <laughs> That's the reason. Interesting. Uh, but anyway, get, fast forwarding to the most important part. The most important part is I walk two miles with my Airedale Terrier. Mm. And a dog. it's good for me Babe. because it helps me kind of mentally Bobby. process mm. what's coming up for the day. Mm. And it also walks my dog down a little bit because they are, they are a very high energy breed. It's it is nice. I agree. Like taking Charlie for a walk in the morning. Gemma, I don't walk as long because she's older, um, but it gets out the energy. But also, mm. if you do that last, it's like, okay, this is my last. I'm ready to go into the day. I've thought yep. about it. Yep. I also find that the Chemex is like that. Like when I do a pour over, it, mm. yes, it's slower, and but kind of like you're saying, it's like a methodical thing that you do. First thing in the morning, it's kind of muscle memory. Kind of yeah, it works your brain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's I what I do with my beard. <laughs> your beard? Your beard's methodical. Oh, okay. beard. Your beard. I thought you, yeah, the brewing you said the beard. beard. Yeah. I was like, like wow, a, I did not know this. You have oh. a beer every morning? <laughs> I won't drink at night, but in the morning. That explains <laughs> a lot. <laughs> More of a morning yeah. drinker. So, Avery, oh. I'm so, as a type four, I would love to hear your <laughs> most important part of your morning. Oh, I forgot routine. about Avery. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like y'all could have guessed this. Um, Wait, what time do you get up? Um, 10 minutes on a work I'm day. supposed to be On there. a work day, when do you typically? And that's not Wednesday. It depends, like 7 to 7.30. Dalton gets up at 5, so sometimes that wakes me up. So do you um, ignore your phone until you're driving to work? Um, Usually, yeah. Oh. I don't sleep with my phone. I keep my phone in oh, the no, room that's for fine. that same reason. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of need time to not think about what I have to do that day because if I start the, if I, if I start thinking about everything I have to do, then it makes me anxious. That's a good practice. I just need to, that's smart. I just need to, like, have time in the morning. Um you wake up. <laughs> yes, I, I probably could wake up early. Just I play. am not a morning person by nature at all. Um, I'm definitely a night owl. But yeah, I mean, if you know me, you know that I love coffee and that I used to work at a coffee shop. So, um, what if they don't know you? Now they now do. They now they you, know. now you know. Now the more you um, know. <laughs> but of course, I mean, I love the. We're pretty. Our coffee setup at home was pretty extensive. Um, e expensive. And expensive that too. and extensive. extensive. Just say bougie. Yes. Mm. Bougie. Yeah, yeah. Bougie. sure. Bougie. Um, but I mean, and I do enjoy actually making coffee, but it really is just like me sitting there with my coffee and just chilling. Like I usually don't do any type of work while I'm drinking my coffee. I'm usually just thinking or. Do you I, have a place? Do y'all have a place in your home where like, I guess yours is your office, mm -hmm. but the morning like time, like maybe it's Liv's playroom like there with her. Like this is. I hold off on coffee until I get to work. Well, no, I mean like this is where you're, you spend your time in the morning kind of preparing for the day. Oh yeah, like I'm, I have I'm a, hanging out with Liv in her playroom if we're if it's that day. Yeah, 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 that, makes, yeah. that makes sense. All so right. just to clarify, you're, yeah, you're sitting there drinking coffee, doing nothing else. Not always. Um, if I am doing something, it's it's not work related. Okay. What is specifically? Um, like reading or um, watching a YouTube video or. Something like that. So if my wife comes in the room and I'm sitting there having a cup of coffee, doing nothing. <laughs> I'm not like, just staring Are at you the wall. Okay? No. <laughs> do we need to? Do we need to go see someone? <laughs> no, Let's... I'm not just staring at the wall. <laughs> There's a literal um, hole in the wall where Ben stares. Just at Just staring wall. at it. But like... it's just like it's the one nice thing that I do for myself in a day, and it's just like I, you know. It just makes me happy. Mornings there are important. I, yes. I totally You should do that. more for yourself. <laughs> I know. Nice I know. And, yeah. Yes. In fact, I get annoyed if my morning is shaken up. Yeah. Like, oh, we know this. And, and, and <laughs> it's, it, it, yeah. it's the way that I start my day, and you will know if my morning routine got shaken up. Because, man, <laughs> um, like, wow, Austin's a real jerk. He just <laughs> never, like, if you if you knock Austin over in his morning routine, he just never Really? Never pops yeah, back for up. real. That's You're like, you should have sat in coffee. your chair longer. <laughs> <laughs> Old yeah. man. Great question. Here's Great a book. <laughs> it's a good question. I like that. Yeah. Um, next question. I love, I'm like, really excited about this question. Um, what is the best hole in the wall restaurant you've ever been to anywhere oh, wow. in the world, country? Can we have top five? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if we have time to discuss I mean, them. is it local or just anywhere? Anywhere. Sounds um, anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! Or I mean, we could anywhere do, we could do local recommends. If no, people I'm, here I'm, are do, local. I'm gonna do anywhere. Here, I I can start us while y'all are thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, we Dalton and I went to, um, Seattle on our honeymoon, and this was very unexpected. I was not expecting 
this type of cuisine to be so good there. But um, we found a Mexican. If you say Greek, I'm going to fall out of this chair. No, no, it was uh, Mexican food. And oh my goodness, it was so good. Mm. It was called Barrio. In Seattle? And, yeah. Oh. Um, I don't really know where in Seattle it was. You can look it up. But, oh gosh, I don't even know. There wasn't anything, like, special. Like, it wasn't, like, they had a special taco or something. It just... It was just good. The food was just so good, and I'll never forget it. We actually went there twice because I was like, when's the next time we're going to be in Seattle? Like, we, <laughs> we need to come back and eat here before we leave because mm. it was so good. I find that I'll, I appreciate restaurants more that are the way that you're saying. It's not that they have this special thing they do. Mm -hmm. They're just... The food's good there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you if you can master the simple things, I feel like that says a lot about you as a chef. I prefer going to small restaurants that have a very limited menu. Mm -hmm. uh, because then you go in and you feel like, oh, wow. Th that's yeah. all they have. But they do those five things really, really well. well. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm here for that. Anything come to mind for you, Ben? Yeah. Actually, believe it or not, um, there's a... I, I spent some of my growing up in Terry, which is south of Byram. And uh, there's a place out there called the Wendell Meat Market. And it is definitely a hole in the wall. And they're mm. known for smoked meats. Oh. And specifically, their um, chicken quarters are mm. really unbelievable. And the sides are typical Mississippi, totally like die early death because of all the things that are <laughs> Beautiful. in them. Yeah. So That's you, how you know it's good. You have to be ready. Yeah. But uh, it's just, it's well off the beaten path. Really, really good place. I haven't been there in years, uh, but I, I think the people who, who still live there frequent it often. So. Mm -hmm. What you got, Chase? I saw you Googling. <laughs> yeah. yeah like just you were trying to find the location of somewhere you No, I, I knew the place. I decided I have it pinned on Google Maps. Uh, it's in London, mm. uh, you know, England. And I no, clicked on the pin, and it changed the name of the restaurant to something different. Oh, no. Oh. oh. And I was like, what? What? So I did a quick Google of my place, and it says, dearest customer. No. We're sorry to inform you, but due to the current pandemic, we've decided that the uh, the best thing we can do as a restaurant now is to close our doors. We appreciate all of your oh. how sad. That is very all of your sad. business over the years. Rest in peace. Okay, but what was it? And I Whatever was gonna was. tell you. Uh Gills, G E A L E S, which I think is a play on Gills, because uh, it's a fish and chip place. Oh. And to this oh, day Oh that London. That yeah. sounds like a very <laughs> southern way to say that word. I know, Gales. but it looks, it looks like a last Gales. name. <laughs> Gills. Okay, no, but we need an active one. Yeah. I thought no, that no, was no. my hey, favorite okay. in the whole world. Hey, what's the place we went on staff uh in Birmingham? The um the the Mexican place was really good. I'm not, I wouldn't pick Mexican, but I don't know. Where did we eat in Chattanooga? That was kind of a hole in the wall place. Uh which place? The Papusa place. Oh uh, shoot. That was uh, good. It was Guatemala. Uh, Papusaria. La P Papusaria or something like that. Hmm. I don't remember. Delicious. We kind of happened upon this place in Chattanooga. And That's like hole in the wall of the hole in the yeah, wall. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend yeah. going there after dark. Which we did. But the food was fantastic. They didn't speak a lick of English, but it was delicious. <laughs> I'm curious what your answer is, Austin. I have... I have <laughs> you have so many? I, I know. have so many that came to mind, but I'll, I will give you one that I've driven for multiple times, okay? okay. Um, so... I, there were several that came to mind, but the one that I think of the most is a place in Longview, Texas called Carter's. Um, and just so you know how good this this place is, when I used to, I used to drive to Houston pretty regularly um, and would drive probably an hour or more out of my way to go buy Carter's. The wow. friend and I that would road trip together would go there to get food. And even still, I have made trips from my hometown just to Longview to only eat. I've done that in the past year, you know? Wow. And so Carter's That's crazy. Carter's is a barbecue place. Mm -hmm. And it's like Texas style barbecue. If you if you know anything about it, it's brisket it's, and whatnot. Yeah, it's different than like Memphis or Kansas Carolina. City or Carolina barbecue. It's not quite as vinegary. It's it's much more uh, on the dry side. Mm -hmm. Their brisket is world changing and wow. my favorite thing that they do is actually not even going to get like a brisket plate 
if you go there at lunch, you can get a sandwich, and it's almost like a Philly cheese steak, but instead of steak, they do it with brisket. Mm. And it's on this perfect French bread. It's just... See, I feel like places like Dickies have ruined people here for understanding that kind of food. You know, I was on yeah. a flight a while back coming back to uh, Jackson, whatever y'all call that airport. It's such a long name. <laughs> I was coming back to Jackson, and a guy was coming into town. He said, I'm here coming for meetings and work. Where can I get good barbecue here? I think he was just flying to the south, and so he thought, oh, I'll have barbecue. And I was like, I mean, I don't know anywhere. Hickory you can get Pit probably. Here. Would Hickory Pit qualify as a hole in a wall? Mm. I don't know. I've heard, I've not been, but Dalton has heard of this place. It's kind of off the frontage road um, near Meadowbrook, which is kind of close to where we live. Mm. And there is a barbecue place and a gas station. And I've heard amazing things about it. Can we can we take a, a little bit of a side question? Mm-hmm. Just because I'm not from here, but I think this will be helpful to people here. Let's talk about a couple of hole in the wall places locally. Okay, I've that got are good. I've got like, one. Like do, do y'all have one like locally that your family enjoys? Jackson, Madison. Just general yeah. area. Yeah. I have one. Go ahead. I, it's probably actually fairly well known, but I don't know. But uh Tommy's trading post uh over by the res uh in Brandon. Like right where Canton and I think it's Brandon meet. Yeah. Uh just when you uh, out past your house yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I think have we not eaten there? We haven't eaten there, but you've told me. Yeah, we're supposed to. They have one of my favorite things to order in this uh, entire metro area is their uh, country fried steak sandwich. Mm. It is, it is heaven on a heaven on a bun. It it's sounds really like good. Right there. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. It's a tackle yeah. and bait shop. I could probably guess what you're going to say, Avery, but please, probably, please go ahead. Um, so our old apartment was kind of near uh near Amerigo and Ridgeland, mm. right by my gym. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and. Dang, I shouldn't put that out there. Mm. <laughs> You're going to change that. That is anyway. your happy place because you don't know anyone. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. Uh, it's till somebody found you. Yeah, but she's sweet and doesn't talk to me. So <laughs> in in that area, kind of behind our apartments, it's also behind the Domino's if you if you drive over there. That's definitely what there, I'm going to guess. There is this little um, like Mexican hub. There's like three or four stores. There's a... Um, there's a restaurant that's incredible, and then there's a bakery mm. that has La churros. No. <laughs> it <laughs> is incredible. No one there speaks English, which is how you know it's good. The best. And then um, right down the street, there's the Valdez Market, which I'm sure you've seen if you pass it. It's pretty huge. But there is a restaurant in there. And oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's super cheap. The tacos are they're relatively large, especially if you compare like Green Ghost or Babalu. Um, and... They're two dollars a piece, and they are so good. That's so go check it out. It's it's so good. Mm. You know, a a, a call a telemarket place got shut down over there one day because it was illegally operating, and I got to go help seize the chairs and desks and stuff. There you go. Pretty Look fun. at you. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> uh, there was literally so much in there, and I was working at. Uh, City of Ridgeland Parks and Recreation. Uh, they were like, hey, quit hey, painting those please, lines. I, I need you out here. <laughs> Get out here, sport. That's but hilarious. My lines are so straight. <laughs> yeah. The place that came to mind for me, um, I, I honestly, I had a couple of others in mind, but I don't think that we could do this segment justice and not say it as Mr. Chins. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Mr. Mr. Chins. Is it still, like, at what point do you stop being whole Anytime you have it to walk through the, the market past yeah. okay. ducks hanging on the wall yes. to true. get to Fair the point. restaurant. Don't, don't let that scare you away from it because it is Hold your breath until you amazing. get to you, the restaurant and you're good. It's one of those places, if you haven't been, which I think a lot of our people who listen have been. It's one of those places where the market is there and there's a restaurant in the back, kind of mm-hmm. like you were just yeah, talking about. Market. And it is, like, that market is about as authentic as it gets. Yeah. Um, but the food, Mr. Mm-hmm. Chen's food is phenomenal. It is. You know what I didn't know? That there's 18 different brands of teriyaki in the world. They're, and they're all and there. they're all sitting on yeah. the shelf. And you there. can't read one of them. Put that on your duck. <laughs> Do you like duck? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't. It's okay. delicious. Ben, what? I know yours was kind of local, but do you yeah. have any other ones? Um, I was just sitting here thinking, like, just my, my, my dining experiences have changed so much over the years. Mm-hmm. Having uh, a 13-year-old or a 10-year-old, we're just at our table at our house so much. So when we get out, uh, it's usually just uh, my wife and I, mm-hmm. and we go to someplace very nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, I don't really have a lot of experience with this scene like I used to. Did you ever go to Raps? 
uh, the hole in wall Amerigreek place that was off the frontage road in Jackson? Mm-mm. Okay. No, I went. I you Davis know, there was like uh, there was stamps was a place for a while that people would go, and yeah, I mean, I I did a lot of that when I was younger and working, like hitting those spots up for lunch all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? That's kind of the vibe. Yeah. 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 I get it. Awesome. Good question. Yeah, I know. I was, I was super excited about that one. Um, this last one is also this is a total turn. Um, if you have one, what is a near death experience you've had? Cancer. Okay. <laughs> oh, you beat me to it. Uh, <laughs> Those who listen to the first. I mean, get yeah. It. <laughs> I guess. Um, I guess we've heard Ben's. Oh, no, I have more. I don't know if that's I have in more the more as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of choosing. Even if it's not actually a near death experience, yeah, let's say how like it, is it relative where to you? How maybe near you, you were? thought you were gonna die, or a super dangerous situation. This this will be quick, so I'll tell it. I I was a chaperone on a rafting trip in college, and um, there was a place where you stopped and like uh, got on the falls, and you could go over the falls, it's Turtle Falls or something like that. And it's not super high, but it's high enough where it would be really fun to jump and dive off and. You know, and I uh, asked the guy who took the trip every year, if, you know, is it safe to do that here? He's like, yeah, yeah. He's screaming over the falls. Yeah, go ahead, man. And come to find out, he didn't hear what I was actually asking. Oh, my goodness. And I dove, like, head first. Oh, my goodness. And the, I remember my hands hit the rock underneath the surface of the water. And my waist was still out of the water. I remember oh. having that thought, like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm about to break my neck. This is it. Yeah. And um, thankfully, I had <laughs> over rotated a little bit and I was able to kick my feet. And But after that, I stood wow. up and my waist, it was about waist deep. And I had, d- I dove right onto it. Jeez. Wow. So that was probably out of all the cancer, funny stuff. That's probably the closest I've come to actually dying. Wow. Yeah, it was bad. Jeez, that would have sucked. <sighs> I hope my parents don't watch this. They don't know about that. <laughs> I had, a, I, I had a we used to go cliff diving in Arkansas and I had a good friend that broke his neck uh doing Goodness. It. Yeah. yeah. That's why I asked before. I'm like, I know people will get injured doing this a lot. Is it yeah. safe here? And he's like, yeah, yeah. Give yeah. Me the big Can thumbs, you up. thumbs up. <laughs> and you're he's confident. It's and a lot defense. of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it really is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um man. You got one, Chase? Uh kind of. Okay. Uh and there's there's situations like there was younger one where I was younger where like I wasn't great at swimming yet, and, like, I, like, had a panic moment out in the deep end and, like, literally was, like, coughing up water by, <laughs> by the time I got to the oh, side. But that was, like, terrifying. I was, like, four. So, you know. But still, that is terrifying. Yeah, it was scary. But You made it to the side on your own? Yeah. Wow. Well, like, I couldn't yell out because, like, I was You're taking was on water, water there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. no one could hear me. It was also after a dude pushed me into the pool, so mm. I still hate him to this day. <laughs> um, you know who you are. Yeah, I, I could, tell, I could say his name right dead now. dead to me? <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, a quick one is, I was on my way to Pickens with a friend of mine who uh, he had moved there, and his family had a house that was paid off, and so they still had a home up there. Mm. Um, and so we were going up there to visit, and I had the bright idea. I said, "Dude, what if we like put it in cruise and like switch spots while driving?" And he was like, "That's a freaking great idea." I was like, yes, it is. This was senior year. And so I'm in the passenger seat. We're in his truck. I hop in the back. Oh, my goodness. As he hops over to get in the passenger seat, his knee it's catches a, the, of course the it steering does. wheel. Yes. And it's on, we're on a bridge. Oh, I'm so anxious Im- thinking about this. <laughs> no. We, we got pretty close, but, like, it immediately jerked us towards the uh, the railing. And I had to, like, I had to grab the wheel before I was even in the seat. And, and and pull it back. So from a distance, it probably just looked like, you know, he was texting and driving and, and got swerve. a little distracted. But in reality, we were about, you know, probably two and a half seconds from 80 miles an hour into the side of the... You wow. pulled it off, the Oh, yeah. There you mm, go. Still here. <laughs> Ooh. Um, Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... I've Unless you're one. like in New Mexico. It's wide open. There's no speed You're just going to, yeah, yeah. You're just going to go out in the... Just super wide. Yeah. The planes yeah. at that point. What you got, Avery? Um... I don't know if this was actually near death, but I was definitely terrified when this happened. But somehow I got convinced into going parasailing at the beach when I was like 14, 13 or 14. And so, like, platinum dancer Avery. (laughs) Yeah. Peak Avery. Thank you. Could you please? 
put that picture of Avery as the thumbnail. I don't think she'll let me have it. <laughs> no, everyone would be sorry, confused. Everyone would be confused. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know if it's like this every time you go parasailing or if this is just how they slow you down when you come in. Um, like when after you've been sailing, you they you know pull you in, and usually they dip you in the water mm. um, to slow you down. And uh, they dipped us in the water, and we went, like, completely underwater. And then, like, we were just moving underwater. Like, it wouldn't go back up. I think the wind stopped. Mm. And so we were, like, underwater. It wasn't that long, but it felt like it was forever. Long enough. And then we came back up and then went under again. And that was just, that was terrifying. Is that the last time you parasailed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let me get this straight. You're underwater and you're like, I cannot control if I surface. Yes. That's up to someone else. That is, it, it's up that's to a Mother terrifying Nature. Feeling. Yeah, that's yeah. A terrifying. It was terrifying. Yeah. Um, but another reason to never do that. Man, I would be yeah. incredibly mad mm. by the time I got back to that boat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was it was not it was not ideal. Yeah. You got one, Austin? It was yeah. A couple of things came to mind. Like I grew up in a house with four boys. So it was like a weekly <laughs> near death yeah, experience. <laughs> it was like I remember there were a couple of times where like there was one time I got stuck under a four wheeler like off in the woods by myself. I remember getting stuck under a um like a barge in the middle of the like there was that we used to kayak a lot and you could kayak there was a guy who had private land and he had like a private pond off of it and he had a huge barge with a trampoline and so we would sneak out there and one time at night I got caught underneath it or whatever <laughs> and that was scary. Um, but as far as like near, near death, probably the most like jolting thing that ever happened was once I was, we were on the Buffalo river and I was with friends in high school and it was late. We shouldn't have been out there. And something was like on my foot. Like this is the most, this is because it was so quick. It was the most afraid. I think I've been, there was something on my foot and I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't really know what it was. It was in the canoe, and so I kind of kicked it, and uh, it moved. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there was a water moccasin sitting <gasps> on my foot in the canoe. No. And it did not strike? No, it was just, like, in the corner. I, like, moved my foot off like this, and it, like, moved really quickly, and I was like, what is that? Oh, like, man. bailed out of the canoe. <laughs> like, it was... <laughs> it was Terrifying. Did it go in the water after you? Yeah, I mean, I turned off the... I turned over the canoe or whatever. While you were in the water... I mean, it didn't want to be there either. But, <laughs> but <laughs> like, then I'm like, it's with you. you. Yeah, it wasn't with like, you. So, <laughs> were you guys known as like the Roberts boys? Like that's how that went? <laughs> it was were... like, yeah. Well, so where we grew up, my, my no, family Arkansas. had some land. And then we grew up right on the edge of uh, Corps Engineer land in the Washtenaw Mountains. And so I was never in the house. We would run and, and play and you were out in the yeah. woods and you would just do your thing. And it was like, you just came home at the end of the day. Mm. You know? That sounds um, awesome. Yeah. It was crazy. Crazy, crazy. Mm, near death. Yeah. Good question. Great we answers. all made it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for sending in your questions. Yeah. Now we're going to recommend you don't do anything that we did. Or that we yes, wouldn't do. Would not try <laughs> yeah. at home. Now yeah. as adults. But you should go eat at those restaurants because Good call. they're amazing. Yeah. Just don't switch seats while you drive there. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or I'm pretty proud I had the stupidest thing on the list. Yeah. That that's was nice. That I don't usually have dumb. that. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. pretty, yeah, that's dumb. Everything else is like, oh, that probably shouldn't have happened that way. <laughs> yeah. You chose to do that. Yeah. One. Yeah. yeah. Great this, story, though. Is well this done. the part where you go, recommend? <laughs> no, he goes, great segment. And no, that's the first segment. Oh. oh which already sorry. happened. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. It's recommends. <laughs> recommends, recommends. Was that it, Avery? It was, Did I do probably, it? it was probably close. Yeah, I think so. Really? Like wow. a miss. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. It's probably a little sharp. But alas, we don't care about that. We care about recommending things to you. Um, we like we like things like thanking Janice, uh, <laughs> segments, um, clapping. What else do we like? Yeah. All right. Is this going poorly? <laughs> I think that if they get it, you have to ask. <laughs> they get it by now. Yeah. Thank you, Janice. Want, need, wear, read. Uh, we really need to have her on one day. 
Every time I say thank you, Janice, I think. Yeah. I wish I could say it in person. Mm. Thank you, Janice. If we get to say it in person one day, do we have to say it again? That would probably be the final. The yeah. final. Yeah, thinking. I think we need to find a new formula then. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Austin. Finale. What do we want? What do we want? What the heck are you doing, <laughs> <laughs> Avery? Whose podcast is that? Oh, sorry, Lee. sorry. I thought the segments bled over. Well, I thought I had read. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Want. Oh, okay. Want need wear read. Okay, so want. Um, I I thought of one, and I was actually I recommend this to almost everyone that also uses an iPad regularly. And I think I actually got this from Ben. But my favorite <laughs> app on my iPad is Notability. Mm. If you have an iPad and an Apple Pencil, there's no better way to keep notes than the Notability app. You can change your paper. You can change the color of it. It can be lined. It can be graphed. It can be like however you want to keep notes. And then it's such an organized way to do it. I have folders for you know, this for the podcast, for Amplify, for whatever, even just stuff that I do outside of work, the Notability app is so handy. Oh, yeah. And you can just Mm. mirror it up on a screen during meetings. Um, It's so mm. fantastic. It makes you look twice as intelligent as you really are. (laughs) It's because it straightens your lines for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, you're up there writing, and you're like, wow, that guy has a perfect circle. Nope. And you're like, no, it's just the app. It did it, yeah. But it's great. Also, with the introduction, the mass introduction of the smart PDF now that has links and things. So handy. You can put that in there. and PDFs are freaking... So you can just throw it in and fill it out. It's great. I wish that... I wish that I got something every time I recommended it from Notability because literally there are three or four people that I know that now use it because oh, yeah. I'm like, you need this app. Okay. Solid so, want. Yeah, it's good. Mm. Mm. Wait, so you want this app? You yes, want it. You oh, want okay. it. Yeah, you don't know it yet. <laughs> Once you that. have it, you'll know you'll that need you it. need it. <laughs> yeah. mm. like and heroin. then you can read it and <laughs> yeah. wear it. You want Same heroin, but eventually you'll need it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you thought you wanted it. <laughs> No. Uh, I love Sorry. this podcast. We're going to have to put a trigger warning on this podcast. Yeah, they're going to start putting Local the Church makes this. jokes about drugs. How could they? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you figure. how, just like this. Lighten up, everyone. We, we were not saying that you should do heroin. It was just a joke. Uh, anyway. Now, now that the election's done, we make drug <laughs> jokes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Need. We love you, Bernie. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, need. Uh, I, mine's pretty good because this is. So, <laughs> this is. Uh, I'll get the inbox for that. Though. Somebody will email me. Yeah, Austin. I can't believe you would say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's something you need. Uh, this is an underrated one. Uh, probably because a lot of people have it. But if you don't, you should try it because it can really get you out of the pinch. Okay. You need. Uh, an outside of your garage code opener. Oh, I've always wanted one of those. Can it you can't... retrofit that? I think you can install it oh, later. Yeah, that'd be. I'm I'm on it, man. I'm almost certain. Okay. Yeah. Talk to somebody smarter than me, though. I used yours just the other day. You did. Yeah. I yeah. use Rushmas all the time. That's Chase... another way. It's very handy because you're like, hey, man, can you run to my house? And yeah, yeah. Chase can came you... out to his garage, and Chris Wilson and I were just sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, it's much like Avery and Rushma. Yeah. That's um, exactly what happens. She uh, comes back from the gym, and I'm just sitting there eating Olive Garden. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to like keep a spare key anywhere either. It's so handy. Yeah. Uh, and if you like, if you're somehow stuck without your keys, like one point, one at one point, Austin's like dropped me off before after church or something, and Rachel's mm-hmm. doing something with Liv, and she can't really come to the door. Put in the code, easy peasy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's super useful in so many situations. You deserve to have it. You need to have it. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm literally when you stop this episode, I'm hitting up Amazon. That is Research awesome. it. I don't want to like steer you wrong. I'm like, if, that's handy. Yep. Yeah. All right. Where are we? Where? Yep. Where? Here. Where? Here. We're here now. Oh. Uh, all right. Can I can do man. where. This where is going to be, I believe, very specific to the South. Okay. okay. Cowboy hats. <laughs> Cowboy boots. Yeah. Yeah. Georgia no. boots. I want to wear gym shorts, uh, a Cabela's, <laughs> two hot jacket, and a fish hook. Like that, Larry does. Are you at Amplify? Yes, I am. Like, okay. like Larry does. <laughs> What'd you got, Ben? All right, so I discovered this when I had an outdoor job. Mm. Uh, we all know that it gets very warm here. Extremely. And Balmy. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Great description for where I'm headed. So a problem <laughs> uh, is if you 
are one a person that wears a belt, and there are a lot of us out there mm, that wear day. belts. Yeah. No. Nope. Um, and if you are like one of those kids that grew up in the nineties and you're wearing a leather belt and it's 97 degrees, that's just a bad idea. Mm. There's no need to do that anymore because now we have the nylon belt that's made a lot of great strides. Okay. It's going to hold your pants up. You're going to feel like as belts should you're yes. feel like it's a doing Navy it's seal. OG. What yes. For. Yeah. Yes. And there are all sorts of companies are coming out with these belts that have <laughs> low profile buckles on them like a gucci belt well no (laughs) i'm curious where you got yours because i bought one semi recently and i hated it because it was so stiff so yours yours must form fit better than mine did yeah it does well you have to be careful if you get too far into the like conceal carry realm then you're you're going to be in a little bit of trouble i'm not putting my business out there (laughs) those are those are going to be a little bit more stout. But if you go kind of like the outdoor company brandish, hmm. those are going to be like a, little, Diamond a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Diamond. Patagonia, uh, Grip, is it Grip 6? Uh, those grip are, 6. Those are not good because oh. uh, they do not, they don't hold. Uh, great marketing, terrible product. Hmm. But there's so many brands out there. and uh, Sounds like, is that Vertical? <laughs> you definitely you made that joke before I could get there. Yeah, yeah. Like many churches. Yes, but anyway, so the belt is like it's not nearly as hot as a leather belt, and you can make it match whatever your fashion is. Mm. Mm. Love it. Yeah. A belt is one of those things that I buy and then have for ten years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a daily belt wearer. You guys don't wear belts. I wear a belt every day. Joggers okay. don't have. Belts. Joggers don't have loops. <laughs> <laughs> the one flaw in John. Funny statement. Yeah. All right. You need a hat that says that. You have a read that is actually a nonfiction. Um, I, I cannot wait. Is there a vampire romance? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I've never even read a vampire book. You oh, you, you okay. look like you have. You just want to admit it. No. Okay. Um, I'm intrigued. So this book, I know you guys are going to laugh at the name of it. Um, it's called If You Feel Too Much. And um, it's by Jamie Torkow. Torkowski, it's kind of a hard last name to say. And he Wazowski. Wazowski, yes. Wazowski. We'll laugh at that. That's, a, that's funny. <laughs> he is the founder of a nonprofit called To Write Love on Her Arms. And it's um it's kind of like a tattoo it, shop. I've heard <laughs> this guy like speak. It. I think he spoke at a at a Bob Golf thing I was at once. Yeah. Yeah. He um he so the nonprofit, it's kind of a it's a mental health awareness and like suicide prevention. Mm. Um organization and it's kind of just his story and how it came to be and um it's it's an incredible book it is really good so I what's the title again uh if you feel too much if you feel too much Mm -hmm. solid so it's but it's nonfiction. Mm -hmm. so what is it about it's about his story and just kind of how he um how the organization came to be and how he got involved with it and um, gotcha. It's kind of what made him passionate about it. Yeah, things it's, like that. it's one of those true stories of like, this mattered to me first, and I had to pace through this. Mm-hmm. So now I want to help other people, not yes. have to have the fight I had, feeling alone in it, yes. and all that. Yeah, gotcha. absolutely. Yeah. And if you follow them on any of their social media and see the stuff that they do, it's it's all great. Um, it's a great organization. Cool. So he wears a cardigan out. very well too. Yeah, he Just, does. Yeah. It's a hard <laughs> thing does. to do. It is. It's very difficult to do. Unlike a belt, a cardigan is a little difficult to, to wear. But it could also help with concealed carry. <laughs> that is true. Is he muscular? Uh, I don't think muscular bald. guys wear cardigans well. Yeah. So you got to be a little It's because the pectorals thin. peek through the cardigan. Yeah. yeah. It you feels know, it's not weirdly a great shaped. Yeah. yeah. It's not a great look. Not often do your pecs make you look worse. But yeah, when you but wear a cardigan, wear a cardigan yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a pullover. But yeah. thanks for noticing. You remember, you remember Coney twenty twelve? <laughs> yes, I do. What a video! <laughs> yeah. What? All right, can we end this? Yeah.